is to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verse 16. Jesus said, He that heareth you heareth me. And he that despiseth you despiseth me. And he that despises me despises him that sent me. That's simple. Now, why would Jesus say that? Because he and the Father were one. Isn't that right? And he said, now we are one. And we are one with him. Now, here's a question. And this is, it comes down to this. This Jesus said, now watch. He that hears you, hears me. Okay? Now, that's, that was Jesus talking to his disciples. Now, most of you here probably claim to be a disciple of Jesus, or as we would commonly say, a Christian. Those may not always be the same. They should be. But here's the question. Jesus said, if they hear you, they hear me. Now, here's my question to you. Could you say that? Could you tell somebody, well, you know, if you've heard me, you've heard Jesus. Because that's what Jesus did with them. He said, they said, show us the Father. He said, I've been with this a long time. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So the question is, could you say that to somebody on the street? Because if not, now we know what we need to work on. Isn't that right? Because that's the way, it, is, is this not the way it's supposed to be? He said, if you're my disciple here, basically that's who he's talking to. See, if we can't take this then we can't take Mark 16. And if we can't take this, we can't take Matthew 28 as a commission to us. So we have to take the words. These have to fit us. So we have to be able to say, so whenever you're talking to people anywhere, but primarily on, you know, in the street or on the street, what do they hear? Do they hear the world? Because you're in the world, but are you of the world? Jesus said you're not. So what do they hear? Can you be in the world and not be of the world? And can you be in the world and them hear you? And yet you sound like the world. And yet here you are in the world and you sound like the world. But can you say you're not in the world? You're not of the world. This is what I should say. Does this make sense to you? In other words, when they hear you talk, what are you saying? Are you saying what everybody else says? Are you saying what the last news broadcast said? Oh, it's going to be this. So it's going to be that. This is what's going to happen. Are you saying what God says? Because he said if they hear you. Notice he didn't just say if they see you. He said if they hear you, they hear me. Isn't that right? He also said if they reject you, they reject me. Now think about that. Based on your presentation, or let's, let's use the accurate word, on your representation to represent Jesus somebody might well reject him based on not just what you said to them, but what somebody heard you say to somebody. Do you see what I'm saying? Somebody you might not even know might hear you say that and they might reject Christ because they're looking at you as supposed to be able to hear Christ in you. So the, the key is how are we representing Christ? If they hear us, because now think about this. This is, I've been, I've been doing this a while. And what I'm talking about right now is there are certain scriptures that Jesus said. See, when I first started years back, and I, I, I don't know if I'll get a chance to talk about it. I, I want to, but I don't know if I will. When I first started, it was because we had a need. I, I was looking for a particular answer to a particular problem because my daughter was born with a birth defect and, and they you know, said it would take her life and all this kind of stuff. And so we were trying to find answers and we found some, we just didn't find the right ones quick enough. <clears throat> but when we started looking at it and I started looking at scripture and I started hearing some things and I'm like, okay, here's what we need to do. Now this, this actually came while she was alive and then when she passed away, after we buried her, there was a whole other situation, but it was during this whole process, kind of like, it started before she passed and then carried on even more so after she passed away. But because of that, I started doing things differently. I found out how to agree with God. And so I found the scriptures where Jesus was saying certain things about believers 
And I started agreeing with God and said, you said that if I'm a believer, I'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Well, I'm a believer, so I'm going to lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. And I said it and I said it and I said it and I kept saying, why? What was I trying to do? Was I trying to convince God? No, I was trying to convince myself. And I kept saying it until I convinced myself that that was absolute truth, regardless of how I felt. Regard, and the, the, I guess the beauty of it, if you want to call it that, was that the way I came into it, um, it wasn't the typically accepted way. And I didn't just fall, fall in line. I'd heard the uh, you know, party line, you might say, on it. And it didn't work. And so I had to dig deeper. And, and so I, I went against the grain in a lot of things. But the bottom line was I went back to the Word, found what the Word said, agreed with God, according to what he said. And so I started doing that. And then I was watching videos of these A.L. and Jack Coe, all these people. And as I watched them, I would sit there and cry and tell God, we need that back in the church. We need that. We're a gift of healing. Most of those guys operated by gift more than faith. Now, I'm not saying faith wasn't there because you've got to operate gifts by faith. <clears throat> but I'm saying that many of the things they believed were not accurate. But their faith in God, that he was a healer, was accurate. And even how they believed about healing wasn't always accurate. But the fact they believed that God was a healer was accurate. And God met their faith. And so he did things certain ways. And so I was watching that. And because that was a gift, more than just faith in the word, which is the highest form of faith, is faith in the word alone. Because of that, I was watching and I said, God, we need that. And if that's a gift, then I need that gift. But we need that back in the church. We need this going on in the church. And so I had to start believing that I had an, uh, uh, an experience with God. Late one night, coming back from East Texas, driving by myself, and was telling God all these things about how I needed a gift of healing, needed a gift of healing. And God asked me very clearly, said, you want a gift of healing or a gift of feeling? And I said, well, I want a gift of healing. He said, well, how do you know you don't already have one? I said, because I don't feel, feel like I have one. <laughs> and I realized I was going after a feeling more than I was a gift of healing. And it was, those, it was these little incidents that were pivotal that changed everything. And I, I started talking about it and honestly had to leave churches. Why? Because I didn't like it. I asked the wrong questions. I mean, the, the questions I didn't ask weren't the questions everybody else asked. That was normal questions. I was asking questions they didn't like because they didn't go along with their theology. And so, but I, I decided truth was more important than friendship. Amen. Amen. It was more important than fellowship with humans. Amen. And so I went into the word and stuck there and started going through all these things, you know, and started saying it. And then I'd, I'd find more scriptures. And then and I realized over the time that I was schooling myself into faith training myself, training, rewiring my brain so that I thought correctly according to the Word of God. And then I started believing it. And then we started, I was already out doing it. And then we started seeing it work. And then, even recently, I've been, there's other certain verses. And God just, he, he regularly takes me back and goes, what you were doing in the beginning, do it again. Only this time, do this. Do the same way. Just do it, just instead, instead of saying, I lay my hands on the sick and they recover, because that happens now because I believe it. And so because I'm a believer and I believe that, and that, then it works. And so I, I don't confess that all the time anymore. I don't, now I understand, I still believe it. I still agree with God. I still confess it. It's just not my focus. 